Hi pen friends, this is Sarah. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a fountain pen into an eraser. So what you want to do, you probably want your eraser to really be really high end. So take your most expensive fountain pen and then you just rip out the nib and you can use a Pentel twist erase eraser that's pretty long. Just stick it right in there and you've got a really nice eraser. So I suggest doing this with any of your fountain pens, but like I said, probably one that's really expensive would be the best to do for this project. So um, that's what I ended up doing with this pen, but happy April Fool's Day, by the way. Um, and the reason why I did it with this pen, even though this might just totally make you cringe, is that um, this pen was destroyed by having ink go and um, like rust the insides of the pen. Um, I don't know if this happens with a lot of Omas pens, but since they're out of business, this pen couldn't be fixed. I sent it in um, to a reputable um, place, nibs.com, and they just couldn't fix it. So I had the nib taken and put into a different pen. And since I really enjoy looking at this, um, you know, the body of the pen, I decided at least I'd be able to use it if I stuck an eraser in there. But obviously you don't really want to do that with your fountain pen, especially a really nice one. Um, but what I'm really going to talk to you today about is um, what you can do like pens that I've replaced nibs on. So sometimes you want to do that on purpose, sometimes it's unplanned, but it turns a pen that you um, really wanted to like into something you do like. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the pens that I've traded out nibs on. So a lot of people love Lamy. They make several different um, models of pens. This is the Safari, the All Star, and the Nex M. And they all use the same kind of nib. And so you can trade them between pens and they make a variety of different um, points on these. They, they also make black coated ones, um, so like extra fine through broad and then different ranges of italic. Um, and you can just like take it by the sides and pull the nib off, off of the feed like that. Some people use um, tape to do that, and obviously I still have ink in this pen, so now I've got ink on my fingers, but that's fine. Um, and then you can trade nibs, trade nibs between your Lamy pens, um, and you know try out different types of nibs. So, and you know, so those are nibs that you would buy from Lamy. On other pens, they come with one kind of nib. Maybe they come with a kind of cheap nib and you can plan on switching it for like a nicer nib, especially if it has a number six size nib and you, you know it's friction fit. So for some of the um, pens that come with cheaper nibs, um, like the Pen BBS and Jin Hao and Noodler's pens, um, you know, Sometimes people just use the, the nibs that come with them, but I find that I always switch them out on these pens. And the Noodlers is especially nice to switch because it is um, a nice piston fill pen, and this is ebonite. Um, so I think, I mean, it comes with a flex nib, but I found it to be really scratchy. So then I just put a Goulet nib on there, and now I, I like the pen a lot more. So for this pen, it has this blind cap on the back, and you know, it's a pretty inexpensive plastic um, piston filler. This this part is plastic, this part is ebonite. Um, but it also comes with an ebonite feed. So once you get a nice nib on there, it's a pretty nice pen. Um, and then there are pens that I've bought that I really hoped that I would enjoy the nibs on, but then I decided that I didn't really like it. And some of these companies sell nibs um, Actually, yeah, so these three sell nibs that you can replace the one you have on your pen with. Um, this is a Twisby Mini, and they sell this 
nib unit separately. So if you want to change the nib, it comes with this like plastic um, housing on it that matches your pen. Um, but even if it doesn't and you want to just switch the nib, you can press on this black part and this the interior part um, that screws into the pen comes out and you can put a different colored um, plastic housing on it if you still have that part from your pen. Um, or you can just buy the matching color um, nib housing and it's easy to switch on there. And then for Caveco pens, um, this just the um, nib part screws out. Sorry, it's taking a while, but like that. And now I've got ink all over my fingers because I did not take the ink out of these, but it's easy to switch these out also. So if you end up not liking the size nib that you got or somehow your nib is scratchy, although I've always found the Caveco nibs to be pretty good, um, but some I have heard that people have trouble with those sometimes. Um, unfortunately, this pen was quite expensive when I bought it. It's the um, Delta the Journal, and it luckily has a friction fitted nib. It was the Fusion nib, which I think was some sort of scam by Delta because they would claim that it's gold, but it was actually stainless steel with a little bit of gold glued on it. But everyone knew that, and they a lot of people said it was still a really good nib, but I didn't find that mine was. So what I did was I replaced it with a Bach titanium nib, and I really um, recommend the number six Bach titanium nib because it gives you nice flex for a lot less money than a gold flex pen. Um, the only thing is that it is kind of, um, it has a lot of feedback, so if you don't like feedback, you probably won't like that, but I have been able to smooth it on um, micro mesh, so you could try that out. Um, but my friend Stacy wanted to take a look at this pen. It's really pretty, and it's plastic, but it looks swirled, and it has, um, it's a capture, captured converter, which means that it's really, um, just the same as you know a regular it's not actually not actually captured it's like a regular converter that um, screws into there but then for some reason if you would like to fill it without taking the body of the pen out you can fill it by just taking the um, the cap off of the end and filling it just turning this part um, but I actually didn't like that feature because the the um, converter would rattle by touching the the blind cap on the end. So what I did was I just stuck some um, tissue paper in there so that keeps it from rattling around. But now I really enjoy this pen because it's got a different nib on it. So, um, oh, here's my last one. It's the Franklin Kristoff Pocket 40. And I went for the... Um, medium cursive italic because I'd heard a lot of really good things about it, but I found out I just wasn't um, in love with that nib. It worked really well, but I just didn't like how thin the italic um, was. I prefer like wider italics. I, I really enjoy like 1.3 millimeter italics. Um, so I then bought a broad um, gold nib and I know they say the, with Franklin Kristoff, their steel nibs are so good that you don't really need a gold nib, but I really enjoy the gold better than the steel ones because it is softer and so you can get the ink to pull better with the gold nib. And now I really love using this pen. Um, also with the, the reason I changed the one on the Twisby was that I find their nibs to be kind of on the thin side. So I before this pen, I had never gotten a broad nib, but with Twisby I found that, to me, the broad seemed more like a medium, and I really enjoyed the broad Twisby nibs. All right, so hopefully you won't need to do this, but I do recommend if you're not enjoying some of your fountain pens because of the nib, a lot of them can be changed out, so do consider that. And happy April Fool's Day. Bye, pen friends.